Hi, Zoomers. So what happened today was I tried to log into my Zoom account, but I got logged out and I couldn't get back in and it wouldn't take my password and I couldn't get into the place that has my password. So I have like multiple layers of things that went wrong today. So I did try to get the Zoom meeting started and I failed. And I didn't realize until I got Ashley's email that I should have told you on Google Classroom. Instead, I put a note in the attendance. So multiple things have gone wrong. I'm sorry. But tomorrow, we'll make sure that you can join us. All right. Um, today we are going over, we, we've started a unit on genetics. So let me walk you through real quickly what we talked about today just to get you up to speed. Uh, half of this is review. So this you're already familiar with. Atoms are the smallest piece of anything that have the chemical properties of whatever it is. You combine two or more atoms to get molecules. And some of the molecules that are important in life are things like proteins, or over here, sugars, phosphates, and bases, which we'll talk about more in the near future. So you'll know proteins, because we talked about those, two of the primary things that life is made of is proteins and lipids, or fats. So organelles are made out of proteins, which means cells are made out of proteins, which means tissues, organs, organ systems, plants and animals are made of proteins, as well as other things. But for our purposes, we're just going to think about the proteins. So... Where do those proteins come from? Well, the cell has to make them, but how does it know what proteins to make and how to make them? Because there's more than one kind. There's actually a lot of different kinds of proteins. So here's your nucleus. Remember the organelles in your cell? The nucleus has DNA. And the DNA is the information that codes for a lot of things, but one of the things it codes for is proteins. So the DNA is uh, the complete collection of information it takes to make whatever plant or animal we're talking about. So whether that's you or a shrub or a squirrel, everything has a collection of DNA that basically tells its cells how to make the proteins, the organelles, and all of these different parts to make that plant or animal. All right, so DNA has different sections. So if you think of the DNA as like a set of books, well, each particular book has chapters, and those chapters code for a particular protein, and that's called a gene. So a gene is a piece of DNA that codes for a particular protein, right? So however many proteins it takes to make an organelle, you take one of those proteins and you go, oh, this gene explains how to make that. So here's how it works. The nucleus is where the DNA is housed. The DNA never leaves the nucleus. It stays in there. So what happens is a copy of the gene is made. It's called messenger RNA, MNRA. So a messenger carries information. So... The DNA stays in the nucleus, but a copy of that gene, a messenger, gets carried out of the nucleus and goes to the ribosome. The ribosome reads the information on this messenger RNA and translates it with translator RNA into an amino acid chain that gets folded into a protein. The protein then becomes all the parts of whatever it is we're talking about. So in this particular case, we have a chicken. This chicken has green feathers on the tail. Well, the green in its tail is because of a protein, and the protein is the, what makes it green. Well, that protein is this protein here. So that protein was made by this amino acid chain that is created when this ribosome reads this messenger RNA. So running that forward again, the DNA in the nucleus carries all of the information it takes to make the entire chicken, all of the information it takes to make all of the different parts of the chicken. This gene codes for the green that it takes to make those tail feathers green. So this information, when those tail feathers are being made in the chicken, this gene gets copied, it leaves the nucleus, it goes to the ribosome, the ribosome reads the information, turns it into this amino acid chain that gets folded into that protein, which shows up in these tail feathers. So long story short, DNA carries the information that makes the proteins that become the parts of whatever plant or animal we have. Or coming back to this here, the proteins are what the organelles are made of, and the organelles make up the cells to make up the tissues to make up the organs and make up the systems to make up the animal. So the DNA, uh, where is it here? DNA codes for the proteins that make up all the different parts of whatever plant or animal we're talking about. It's a lot of information. So we had an activity today. The, the colored chicken there is the activity. So the way it worked was this. Each table was uh, a group, and each person in the group was one of these different parts. One of them was the messenger RNA. 
and one of them was the ribosome, one was the transfer RNA, and the other was the protein. So the way that the activity worked was this. <clears throat> across the hall, across the hall I've got a storage closet, and in the storage closet I have, let me, let me show you, I've got different genes. Now the genes are, they're just a, a couple of combinations of letters here, or I'm sorry, numbers. So each one of these little boxes is a gene. So I've got here gene A, B, C, and D. So each group got a letter, like you're getting gene A. So this is hanging up on the wall in the closet because the closet's our nucleus. It's our nucleus. So the messenger RNA goes in there and makes a copy of this, leaving the original taped to the wall in there. They come out back into the classroom with this written down. They give it to the person that's their ribosome. So the person who's their ribosome uses this translator chart to turn that two-digit two number uh, into a letter. So for instance, on our chart, the number 42, it's four across and two down. And on our chart here, that's the letter I, four across and two down. So it's a code system I came up with to you know, be able to translate from numbers into letters. And then the person in their group who was uh, transfer RNA wrote down the letters and the letters would spell out something like, um, you know, brown feathers with a red tail. And so then the protein person would color the chicken so that you would wind up with something like, in this case, yellow feathers with a green tail. So that's how uh, today's project worked. And, and we turned into a relay game because we like to run around and yell. We are children. Um, let me think. That's kind of the gist. So... So the, the, the post-it note with the letters in there is the gene. Now an actual gene in DNA, and we're going to talk about this more in the future, but an actual gene in DNA is, is not coded for with a, a two-digit uh, number system. It's actually got a three-letter three word system. They're called codons. So the words in the DNA language are three letters. It's always three letters. And each of those three letters codes for one of these amino acids. And when you get an amino acid chain that's long enough of the right amino acids in the right order, it gets folded into this functional protein, and that's what builds the parts of whatever plant or animal we're talking about. So there is a coded language system. There is information in DNA, and it does get copied. It gets translated. Um, it's got start and stop codons, which means that there's basically punctuation, you know, capital letter and, and period. So everything that makes up language is found in every living cell. And so this is one of those things where uh, there is nothing in chemistry or physics that allows this to happen on its own. That information only is the result of an intelligent mind. In fact, the laws of physics and chemistry would say that this would fall apart and break down. That's all the laws of physics and chemistry can do. It can't create a coded language system. It can only break it down. I mean, similarly, this coding system I had to make this. I didn't just go find this growing on a tree. Information systems don't make themselves. They have to be made by an intelligence with a will, with a purpose. And just as there is no actual correlation between the number 42 and the letter I, there's really no correlation in physics or chemistry that relates any of these codons to the amino acids that they stand for. But the language system that's used by all the different parts of the cell all use the same coding system, just like we use this coding system. And that's how the information in the DNA gets translated into ultimately the functional proteins that make up the parts of every living thing. So genetics, just like uh, cellular biology, become one of those places where the fingerprints of God are just unmistakable. There is intelligence and intelligent design and astounding information-rich, irreducibly complex systems every level, up and down. Like every single step of all of this just screams the fingerprints of God, that, you know, God was here, God was here, God was here. Because all of this requires planning and intelligence and design. There is nothing in nature that can allow any of this to just happen by accident. And everything we know about physics and chemistry means that all of this stuff, when acted upon by the laws of physics, will just fall apart and break down. That's why when something dies, it decomposes. It just turns into dirt. But there's nothing in nature that can turn dirt into any of these. It only works in one direction. So... Like everything else in science, genetics is just another place where we see the amazing design and fingerprints of God. So I think that's awesome. Anyway, so that's what we did today. There's not homework. There was just that chicken coloring activity just to sort of 
go through the different steps that it takes to go from DNA to a protein to sort of explain you know, where all this stuff comes from. So if you have questions on that, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to just learn more about it tomorrow as we start to look into what is DNA and, and uh, how does it work and all that. So this will be a, a fun, slightly complicated unit, but I'm going to make it simple and fun and easy and applicable. So uh, ask me questions. I'm here to help. Otherwise, I will see you in the future. Remember, Jesus loves you.